Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the How To series and in this episode today I'm going to show you how you can set up the motherboard of your desktop system. So I'll cover every component step by step right from the start where we install the CPU onto the motherboard to the end where we attach the front panel of your cabinet to your motherboard. So let's start with step number one which is installing our CPU. Okay, so in step number one, we install the processor and before we install that, the first thing that you have to note is that little triangle on the plastic plate and now if you take away the plastic plate, the same triangle also resides on the metallic plate. Okay, so as you can see, the same triangle also resides on the processor and we will align this with the triangle we saw on the motherboard when we are trying to place the CPU into the motherboard itself. Okay, so to remove the metal cap, we pull the lever out with some force as you can see and we pull the lever out and let it go and the metal cap goes out of the way. So this is the most delicate part of the process as the 1100 pins on the processor has to match the 1100 pins on the motherboard. Before we begin and installing the processor you have to make sure that the triangle on the processor is aligned with the triangle on the motherboard. Then you can gently place the processor onto the motherboard. Don't press it, press it just place it and give it a slight wiggle to make sure that it is in its correct position. So once the processor is installed, you can just take the metal bracket and put it down and then take the handle with the metal bracket, put some significant force over it and pull the handle outwards and then push it into the bracket. With that step done, your processor is now successfully installed and the metal bracket will now safely hold the processor in place. Okay, so in this next step we will install the CPU fan and so this is an Intel based CPU fan that came with the processor itself. So as you can see this is the front side of the fan and on the other side what we have is a high quality thermal paste that has been already attached to the fan out of the box. However with these kind of fans you have to remember that if you ever want to take it out and reinstall it you'll have to buy another CPU paste and apply it on the fan before reattaching it to your motherboard. Okay so these are the pins that you use to attach it to the motherboard and as you can see from the arrows itself they rotate by 90 degrees. So you keep it in this position when you are attaching it to the motherboard and you rotate it by 90 degrees when you are trying to detach it from the motherboard. So this is the detach position and this is the attach position. The detach position and the attach position. So as you can see there are four holes, one over there, one over here, one over there and one in this corner. So the CPU, four CPU fans has to be aligned with these four holes on the motherboard and then we clip the fan onto the motherboard using these holes. So once you have aligned all the four pins with the four holes of the motherboard itself, you apply pressure on the opposite pins. So we apply pressure on these opposite pins until you hear the distinct click. So to test it out, you can just give it a little bit of wiggle and see whether it is moving or not. So most of the CPU fans come in a way where the wire is wrapped around in such a way that the fan won't be able to move properly. So to fix this problem, we take the wire out of its holding positions and we give it a few turns so that they stay together in place and they do not separate out or the cords do not separate out. The next thing we will do is place it and connect it into the motherboard. So as you can see the latch on the pin goes into the bracket of the pin itself. So that's the way you put it in and now your CPU fan is perfectly installed on your motherboard. Okay, so in this next step we will install the RAM. As you can see this is the Fury HyperX 8GB DDR4 RAM at 2133MHz. Remember all the products that I mentioned in this video are linked down in the description below. So these are the RAM holding slots on your motherboard. So we can just install this RAM on any of these slots and it really doesn't matter on which slot you choose as long as you place the RAM correctly. So before installing the RAM, first we will gently pull this pin outside. So in some motherboards, you might ha also have to pull the other side pin of the other side outside too. So in this motherboard, we just need to pull this outside. The next step that we will do is align the hole on the RAM on this side with the hatch on the motherboard itself. So once you have that aligned, place the RAM into the holder it's of the RAM holder and give it a press until you hear the distinct click. And as you can see the clip has also gone into the RAM to keep the RAM in its place. So this is the Cosair VS450 watt power supply 
and this is the 24 pin plug that will provide much power to your motherboard. Now the 24 pin plug is usually located at the right rightmost corner of your motherboard beside the RAM slots and the pin also comes with a latch so that you know which way the pin should go in. So you just take the pin and with the latch facing away from you place it into the 24 pin hole on your motherboard gently until you can press it in the hole, the hole pin inside and you can feel that the pin has gone in. So there won't be any distinct clicks over here so you just have to feel and recognize that it's inside. So the next thing we will do is connect the power supply to the main motherboard which will be the power supply for the CPU itself. As you can see I have two power connectors over here one label CPU and one label PCIe. So make sure you put in the CPU plug and not the PCIe plug because if you do this wrong it might fry the motherboard. The CPU plug this comes with the 8 pin power plug and as you can see on the motherboard itself we have just four plugs. So we will just pin in the four plugs and leave the other four out. So again, like the previous plugin, we have another latch over here which should be matching with the latch on this side of the motherboard. So we will take it this way, put it in until this gets connected. Okay, so in this next step, we'll install the hard disk and as you can see, it has two ports. One is the power connector, which is a longer one and what is the data transfer connector, which is the shorter one. Now from your power supply, look at the cable that has these kind of headers. So these are the SATA power headers. So these has some angular brackets onto the cable and also on the connector so you have to match or align them before you can push the cable into the port. So once that is done take the SATA cable that should also come with your hard disk or with your motherboard and there are again angular brackets over on the cord which has to match with the angular bracket on the port on the hard disk. So then you can clip on the cable onto the hard disk and take the other end of the SATA cable and plug it into any of the four ports. It also again has angular connectors which has to be matched with the cable and with the motherboard. And with that installed, you have finally installed your hard disk with your motherboard. Okay, so in this next few steps, we'll connect the front panel of your cabinet with your motherboard. So my motherboard or my cabinet comes with a USB 3.0 port so as you can see the USB 3.0 port is marked over there it is either marked or usually color coded so you take the USB 3.0 cable which should be a big one or a blue one like that and there's usually always a missing pin on the motherboard and a missing hole on the cable so you just have to align them up and push the cable into the motherboard until you hear one distinct click Okay, so these are the wires for your front panel lights and switches. It usually comes with four items, the reset switch, the power LED plus and minus, the power switch and the HDD LED which shows the indication that your hard disk is on. Now you have to consult your own mother motherboard's manual to know which of these cords go into which of the sockets on your motherboard itself. So the next that we'll connect is the USB from the front of the cabinet to the motherboard itself. As you can see this is your USB cable and these are the USB pins to which the cable will go into. So it has it is labeled as USB 2 and USB 1. So if you have a USB 3.0 port on the motherboard on the cabinet and you do not have a USB 3.0 port on the motherboard as you can see the USB 3.0 cord also comes with a USB 2.0 adapter which can go into these ports. So to connect the cord the USB cord to the motherboard itself you have to align the missing port on the cable itself to the missing port on the motherboard and then push it in until again you hear the distinct click okay so in this next step we'll connect the front audio ports namely your headphone and microphone jack onto the motherboard as you can see this is the audio cable that should come with your cabinet and this is the f underscore audio port that is labeled on your motherboard so once again to put this cord into your motherboard you have to align the missing hole on the cable as you can see over here so there will be a missing hole on the cable and there will be a missing pin on the motherboard. So you align them up while you connect the cable to the motherboard and you push it in completely until it connects. That's it from this video and if this video helped you guys, don't forget to hit the like button on this video and share it with your friends and family who might also benefit from this kind of step-by-step -step instructional video. If you want to see more of these kind of videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to leave your thoughts and comments and suggestions on down in the comment box. If you have any other questions or any other steps that you could not understand in this video, don't forget to leave them down in the comments below. I'll try to answer each and every comment. So thank you guys for staying till the end of this video and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.